going to initially warn people that the video today may be quite off from actually what's going on in the screen. So the sound and the screen may not line up whatsoever. So there's not going to be a quick solution today only because this is specifically answering someone's question. I had someone reach out to me on LinkedIn. They read my article, which was how to loop through a bunch of files in SSIS, which is a very useful task. The problem that they were facing is that when they archive the file, the file will be the same name as the file from the previous day, so it will overwrite the file, and they don't want the file to overwrite. Now, from the sound of it, and I haven't specified, I just reached out to them again and said, let me, let me see if I understand correctly. It sounds like the file is always in the same location, and the file always has the same name, and they're doing the SSIS loop so that they can run this package daily. Um, now, in that SSIS loop, which, by the way, if you're on GitHub, um, it's under TMMT Smith, and then SSIS flat file loop, it's right in this folder. In this, the assumption is that you have multiple files that you're looping through. That's the assumption that I'm making. If you just have one file a day, and it's always the same name, it's always in the same location, I would actually suggest using a bulk insert. Now, if you work at a company and you have a lot of people at your company that can troubleshoot SSIS, great. But as I spoke with a coworker the other day, we were, we were talking about some of the troubles that we've run into with SSIS, which is, you know, we'll build a package and then someone else will troubleshoot that package and it takes a long time. It's not like code where you can put in comments or you can make it to where it's very easy to understand. SSIS uh, can be heck to troubleshoot depending on how many other individuals are familiar with it at your company. So in this case, since the package is already built, this individual's already built a package, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create a PowerShell script which you will want to run in SQL Server Agent, and yes, you can do that, before you run your SSIS package. So what it's going to do, it's going to rename the file, since, as I understand it, it's in the same location, it's in the same, it's the same file name, same extension and everything. We're just going to go ahead and do this um, in PowerShell. So, and again, you can run PowerShell scripts in SQL Server Agent. Basically, instead of, uh, what is it, in the steps, instead of using a T-SQL script, you'll use a PowerShell script. <clears throat> okay, and of course I also have all of this code on GitHub. Um, I went ahead and added it this morning to this right here. It's under rename. So that's what we're going to be doing today, rename PS1. All right, so, and I'm just going to start out by um, doing it as a function here. Right, rename file. Oops. And I'm declaring an object or some objects, I should say. Okay, so I have three objects, location, file name, extension. And um, what we want to do, again, I'm sitting here expressing the requirements, is we want to rename the file. So we're gonna take a file, let's say call it file.txt, and we want to rename it uh, to file plus the date. So what that means is since that's going to be dynamic is we need to get the date. So we're going to declare an object. We're going to get date. It's very similar by the way, you'll notice. Very, very similar to um, T-SQL. Let's open up a new script and just show you some things really fast. Uh, this is always a good idea if you're, you know, uh, what is it, debugging? You'll see that's what get date looks like. We don't want it in that format, obviously. So let's go ahead and let's specify a different format and let's specify the format of the year plus the month plus the date. So again, let's copy and paste this. And you'll see that's what it looks like. It's very similar to how we do like T-SQL backups in terms of the date. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna do the old file name and the old file name is going to be the location plus the file name, plus the extension. And then the new is going to be just the file name, plus, and this is my preference, I do an underscore before the date, but do it however you like, plus the date, plus the extension. 
Now, for those of you who are like, you know, you could do that on, on fewer lines. The reason why I design my functions, I show my work. It's kind of like math. Okay, so suppose you are a senior developer, and I'm a senior developer, blah, 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 blah. That's great. But someone else who troubleshoots your scripts is a junior developer, and you put everything on one line, and they have no idea what's going on. So the code's breaking. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and the junior developer's trying to figure out what's going on. And guess what happens? You get called at 3 o'clock in the morning. People are like, now I'm curious. Why did you write code that this junior developer doesn't understand? Now, a lot of senior developers will be like, well... You know, they should just know how to do things. Yeah, that's, in my opinion, the, the senior developer in that example is being actually the one who's irresponsible, not the junior developer. So, all right. We have a file in C files, which is a text file. Okay, and let's suppose we want to rename that file. And uh, actually, we'll do rename item. I don't have to do any more work, actually. Okay, old and then new. And the reason why, by the way, I, I say that example is because, I've, again, I've worked at a lot of companies that there's always that one senior developer who's like, well, I don't care if people understand my code. And it's like, okay, then when it breaks, and guess who gets contacted? He does. Gets upset. And it's like, well, this is, this is what happens when you, you know, junior developers are always part of companies. So always write code that anyone can understand or anyone can Google. Any person can Google this really quickly or Google this or Google this or Google this. I mean, it, it's a piece of cake. Or they could just post the code on Stack Overflow, and believe me, everybody on the planet would be like, oh, yeah, that does this. All right, rename file. We're going to call the function. So in your SQL Server agent, you'll copy this. And just like if you run a stored procedure, I mean, you're going to input your parameters. So the location is what? C files, right? Okay, there's our location. And then the next thing is our file name. And what is our file name? It's file, it's just file. And then we have an extension. The reason why, by the way, I do the extension, I don't include it as part of the, um, uh, the file specifically is because you'll notice here, I'll explain the logic. You have location, file name, extension. So if I went ahead and threw the file name and the extension together here, I'd have problems here because if this included the extension, hmm, now I have this. So that's why I have the extension as its own thing. Okay, and then the extension. One of the great things about doing PowerShell functions, code reuse, right? So you can reuse this code. All right, so we have our function right here. We built it. It gets the date. It takes the old file name, new file name. The syntax, by the way, for rename item old um, will have the full file location. New deals with the new file name. That's why you don't see the location as part of the new. Once the location is established and the file name and the extension are established for the old, then all it really needs to do is take uh, the new file name that you intend to name it to. So that's why you don't see... Uh, the location as part of that. So then we're going to execute um, this script. And again, when you're debugging, you can open up a new window and you can copy and paste these things and do your own form of testing. So PowerShell is very easy to troubleshoot. So we rename the file and there you go, it has a date to it. So uh, just to answer this person's problem, what I would do is I would take a SQL Server agent, I would use this script, and again, if you need the script, it's right here. I would use this script, you'll put in your location, file, and extension. Since it's the same file in the same location every day and it's only one file, I would run that before your existing SSIS package. Then SSIS, because the way that that um, flat file loop is built, the way that I've built that is it will loop through, uh, it's way up here now, um, it will loop through the folder and it grabs any file in that folder. And so since this is one file once a day, even if you rename it, it's not going to break that for each loop. And so uh, this will allow you to be able to rename the file first, then it'll archive it. And so the next day, you know, it's going to come in as file.txt. And of course, you'll rename that file for that date and then loop through and archive it in the folder. So that's one of the, the ways in which you can do that. Just as a general note, <clears throat> going back to the developer issue, um, be make sure that you're not the only person at the company that understands SSIS. Otherwise, you'll be the one who gets called if the package breaks. Um, it's something that just just out of experience about what was it four years ago? I worked at a company. I think it was four years ago uh, that I was the only person that understood SSIS. And the reason why I avoided using SSIS packages is I knew that if something broke, I would be the one that got the call. So if it breaks three in the morning or four in the morning. 
And uh, it also was a very good lesson because at the time, you know, I was one of those, hey, I have this you know, really fancy code and, and other people, especially junior people, would troubleshoot it and it was impossible for them to understand. And I realized what happens is you end up being the person who gets called at 3 o'clock in the morning and you have to troubleshoot everything. So it's like make things look really pretty and easy to understand because then you can sleep at 3 while um, the junior DBAs or the junior developers troubleshoot things. Anyway, that should uh, resolve that issue, and um, I will go ahead and send this video to that individual. And for those of you who want to know how to rename a file as well, yes, you can do that in SQL Server Agent. Unfortunately, I'm on SQL Server Express, so I can't show how to do that, but it will be the same process. In the step, you'll select PowerShell, and then you'll put in this. Just make sure to change the parameters.